Hello and welcome. It's Morgana here today with the second in a series of new semi-abstract landscapes on this channel. Today I will be demonstrating for you this beautiful Golden Hills painting with a cheeky little red fox. Now you can see today I'm beginning with Saunders Waterford 100% cotton paper. Uh, no sketches or anything to begin with, just got it taped firmly to my board. Uh, in my colours are on screen at the moment, I'll pop a full list uh, in the video description below uh, like usual, but you can see that for now all I'm doing is wetting the top and bottom parts of the paper with a large brush and some clean water, uh, leaving a strip in the sort of upper middle uh, that's free from water, so we've got a little bit of dry paper but most of it uh, is wet. And as you can see, I'm using uh, a palette knife today for this technique uh, and I've applied the paint straight from the tube onto the sort of lower flat edge of the palette knife blade and I'm just carefully and slowly sweeping it along the paper, getting those colours to go from the edge of the palette knife and onto the paper using these sort of soft horizontal marks, just gently encouraging it where I want it to go. You can see as well, I hope that the paint is really going on quite thickly. Uh, this is good because I hope that it will begin to run and flow as I add more water. You can see the, uh, the paint's grey there, that darker colour is already starting to bloom out with the water that I already have uh, on the paper, which is really nice to see. Uh, for this abstract, I was uh, thinking that I would paint a sort of series of uh, like a diagonal hills or pathways, sort of slopes, which is why I'm uh, focusing my palette knife on these sort of gentle horizontal, like soft diagonal lines. And I'm going to begin encouraging the paint to move with my water spray shortly, just to try and get a little bit more interest. Uh, but for now, I'm trying to be careful not to over apply the paint. I just want it in um, just a few lines but with plenty of white space in between so that when I do start spraying with my water spray and the paint starts moving a little more uh, the paper doesn't get too dark or too crowded. Uh, I'm also using the sort of flat edge of the blade to apply there. You see um, you don't have to just sort of scrape it along that sort of flat edge. You can turn the palette knife and use this sort of little flat bottom, <laughs> this little flat part to um, introduce some different sort of shapes and different textures and apply the paint in an interesting manner. Uh, these two colours that I'm using I believe are the um, Winsor & Newton Cotman Payne's Grey, that's the dark colour, and uh, the gold is um, from the Van Gogh range of watercolour tube paints. Uh, the colour is deep gold and now I'm just going to give it all a little bit of a spray uh, because the gold is uh, a really interesting colour to use. It's my first time using it. Uh, it comes really, really thickly out of the tube and uh, it doesn't move around quite as much as I'm used to. You can see here I've pulled the board upwards and tilting it towards me and I've sprayed along that top line. You can see that paint spray is immediately starting to bloom out and run uh, really beautifully, but the gold is a little bit more reluctant. <laughs> to get the gold to run, you need to encourage it with a little bit uh, more spraying and just give it a little bit more time as well. I think it's a, a slightly slower moving paint. It does run, but it needs gentle encouragement, like we all do sometimes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry you can't see uh, quite all of the painting at the moment. <laughs> it's a difficult angle uh, to, to try and film. But you, what you can see is I've got it standing up, sort of balancing on that lower left corner so that the way I'm spraying along the top line, the water is running diagonally from right to left, from top to bottom. And we're getting this really interesting movement in the paint. We're getting these lovely sort of pretty little rivulets and marks and sort of blooms where you can see the cold press paper texture uh, sort of blossoming out through those, uh, through those lines in the paint just getting some really, really nice uh, shapes to begin to form here. And you can see here just why I've put down so much newspaper and have a bit of uh, paper towel to hand as well. It is uh, a, a slightly messy process 
Uh, so do make sure that you protect all your surfaces and uh, pop anything that you value uh, out of the way of the paint. So I just uh, flipped it around uh, so it's upside down and again on that point, that uh, balancing it on the corner, I'm just going to give it another quick spritz with the water spray along that diagonal line just to encourage a little bit of upwards movement. And a little tap as well can sometimes encourage reluctant paint to uh, start moving a little faster. <laughs> Not very gentle encouragement, but encouragement nonetheless. And it did seem to work. As you can see, we've got the paint starting to run more now, and these lovely blooms coming up, well, down technically, but uh, when I turn it upside down, sorry, when I turn it right way up again, these blooms will be going up, we'll have some really nice movement. Uh, you can see with my palette knife, just added a little more gold paint along that top there, uh, because as I said earlier, the gold is a little bit more reluctant to move, so I thought that by uh, layering in a little bit more of it, giving the colour a little bit more weight, uh, it would start to run a little more, which uh, which did seem to work. Ooh. <laughs> of course, I bumped the camera there, didn't I? Clumsy old me. So again, just more water, more turning, more tipping and tilting until you get the, uh, the sort of shapes and uh, the movement that you're happy with. So at this point, I was happy with the sort of upward blooms that we're getting. This is again right side up, except, you know, I'm leaning it on its bottom left sort of corner again. Uh, but I decided it wasn't quite uh, the way I wanted it to. It didn't quite have that uh, downwards diagonal uh, directionality. So i am just uh, turned it the right way up again, applied more paint, more water, and just going to encourage it back downwards gently. And you can see we do have some really, really lovely shapes here. Uh, that gold is starting to move around a bit. We're getting more movement in the gold paint now. And it does just take a little while. It's um, a thicker paint than one I'm used to working with, but it's, um, as you can see, it's this lovely, rich, uh, deep color. I'm just encouraging some extra bloom upwards with my palette knife here. Just a little bit of movement along that top line, but then I'm going to spray it again and pull the painting forwards and try and get encourage some more sort of downward diagonal, sort of right to left movement in the watercolour as well. And just continue to add uh, more paint until you're happy with the uh, with the amount that's there. And of course, because you're spraying and moving it around so much, sometimes it does run off, and you are left with these lovely washy marks. But uh, a lot of the paint actually disappears. So don't be concerned about adding in a little bit more to emphasise those lines that you made earlier. To just sort of go over them with some thicker paint, just to make sure they stay uh, in the picture, so to speak. You can see here I'm just going over some of my lines because where I sprayed and the paint has run down I just want to uh, add in a little bit extra to emphasize to uh, make sure that those lines are still there and are still uh, in the painting. Uh, but this for me is very nearly done now. All I'm going to do is stand it upright like this uh, on its uh, left bottom sort of corner uh, to dry. I'm going to give it another last sort of good spritz with my water spray uh, and let it dry at an angle. And this is what I ended up with. 
Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't show you the drying process, but it's really awkward to actually get it to, to balance on that lower corner alone. So I had a little bit of trouble there with it, but you can see it's fully dry. Uh, that gold has uh, actually run really nicely. It did take quite a long time to dry uh, and to get this effect, but um, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. You can see we've got that lovely movement um, from right to left going from the uh, top corner all the way down to the bottom corner. Uh, that happened while it was drying most of it. Uh, like I said, I gave it one last uh, good spray with the water spray and then <laughs> somehow managed to balance it upright on that bottom left corner to dry. Uh, and a lot of that run happened while it was drying. I sort of came back to it periodically to check. Uh, it did take quite a while to dry, obviously, because the paint is very thick and I had to help it out eventually with a hairdryer on the thicker parts. Uh, but I'm really pleased with how it's run. Uh, so all I'm doing now is using a thin brush to add in uh, a little bit of detail. So I'm doing these sort of um, wistful sort of windswept trees along that top path. Uh, with these abstracts I never quite know exactly what uh, detail I need to put in until I see the finished uh, first wash and then from the sort of what colours you end up with and what sort of light spaces it gives you. Uh, I think the best thing to work out uh, what to do with the uh, with the space that's been given to you. So I'm using a small um, synthetic liner brush. This is a sword liner brush, but you can use uh, any brush that you like uh, to just put in these sort of straggly leaning trees, following that uh, that directionality we've already got in the uh, in the initial wash. And I'm using the Payne's gray to do this. I do have a little bit of gold mixed in there just to give it a slight hint of metallic edge, but you can't really see it. Uh, it just lightens it up a little bit. So now as well as these lovely sort of twisted uh, trees, uh, I'm just going to put in a little bit more detail along the top line, just giving it some grass as well and some extra sort of bits of foliage and interest. I decided that this sort of top diagonal here was going to be the sort of main uh, tree line, if you like. Uh, drawing upon my inspiration of seeing some lovely older sort of twisted uh, hawthorn and elder trees recently on a, on a nature walk uh, in a nature reserve. Uh, which is in an estuary by the sea and you can see that the uh, some of the trees are very slanted, very twisted where the strong winds have blown up from the sea uh, and pushed the branches into a certain shape. You get this very uh, distinctive sort of leaning shape and that's what I was going for uh, for this painting. So I thought it worked really nicely with the with the lovely sloping diagonals that we've already got here. So just lightly going along that top line and filling in a little bit of uh, sort of grass detail, just really fine lines, keeping them uh, at a gentle diagonal as well to just uh, go with the rest of the painting. Uh, but now I'm just doing something slightly different. I decided to add in to the painting uh, a little of the uh, root system of these beautiful trees. I just thought it would go really nicely with the uh, the shapes and patterns that we've already created in that first wash. Uh, I love the sort of whimsical, almost sort of fairy tale feel that this gives to the painting. Uh, it is an abstract after all, or rather a <laughs> semi-abstract, so uh, to have the roots uh, on the surface, but yet not. So we can see them, but um, I like the idea that we're sort of got a view into this lovely sort of sloping bank with this bright gold sort of seeping through the earth and we see these roots of this lovely stunted trees reaching deep into uh, the gold beneath and just giving us this lovely interesting sort of texture. Uh, 
so again I'm using uh, the Payne's Grey here and my liner brush and just following the path that's already been marked out by the uh, by the movement in the wash before and just delicately going along these lines and adding in these little thin wiggly sort of root lines. I'm trying not to uh, keep the lines too straight here. You can see I'm holding my brush uh, sort of at the midpoint just above the ferrule there to give it a little bit of extra looseness, a little bit of extra movement uh, to make sure the lines aren't too straight and look too uh, regular. If you see actual sort of plant roots, they're always very sort of twisty and wiggly and gnarled and really, really interestingly uh, shaped. So I didn't want the roots to look too regular for this. You can see as well, I'm just varying my brush strokes from sort of thick to thin, doing the, the main ones quite thick, the main ones that are sort of sloping from right to left downwards, and then using the tip of the brush to paint the little thin ones branching off. And I just kept doing this <laughs> for a little while. Um, I added in an extra tree uh, on the right and some more roots. Um, I did skip ahead because uh, I don't think you'd want to <laughs> watch me painting tree roots for the next hour. But you can see here, uh, I've added an extra larger tree just in that middle on the right hand side and drawn in some more roots going down following the path that that gold took when it ran, uh, just really following the lines that were already there in the painting. Now for the uh, the finishing touch for this painting, our little red fox. I uh, sketched out uh, a simple outline with a pencil. You can see that uh, I've got my pencil drawing there. did that off camera because uh, <laughs> it went wrong a couple of times, as these things uh, often do, uh, which is why I drew it on the sort of white part of the paper uh, so that I could uh, erase it if I had any, any trouble. Uh, just using uh, my fine detail brush to just fill in that pencil outline really simply and give us this nice sort of stylized, simple uh, shape that just, you know, you look at it and it just says fox. That's all you want. You don't need too much detail or too much worry here. You want that lovely shape of the bushy tail, the lean sort of sloping body and that sort of those, the movement in the hind and forelegs and a little pointy snout. <laughs> And with a painting like this, um, I think it did take me a little while to figure out exactly where I was going to put the fox. You know, sometimes you think, well, I know I need a fox in here, but I'm not quite sure where she needs to be. So I had to paint in all those trees and all those details first, and then look at the painting. And I spotted this little white patch on that left side, just under that lower bank. And I thought, yes, that's where she needs to be. So I popped her in a, almost a, in a little pouncing position there. You see, she's got one foreleg up. Uh, ready to leap. Maybe she spotted something moving uh, in the grass there. <laughs> you can make up your own stories about this one. Uh, the colour I'm using for the fox today is uh, Winsor & Newton Cotman uh, Light Red. Uh, it's a really, really nice, rich shade, and I think it complements the, um, the dark tones and the gold tones really nicely in this painting. And now all I'm doing is incorporating a little bit of extra Payne's Grey into the red, just along the fox's back to emphasise uh, the shape of the leg and just a little bit of shading around the front. You also often get with foxes, if you look, they have little dark uh, paws, <laughs> little black socks, I always used to call them. So I'm going to put a little bit of Payne's Grey just uh, on the tip of her paws, the forelimbs, uh, and just at the end of her feet as well. A little bit on the tail, a little bit just to emphasise the shape of those forward facing ears, uh, as well as just doing, you want a small dot for the nose and a little black eye as well just so that she can see where she's going. There we are, just a quick close up. This is our beautiful fox, very simple, quite stylized, 
easy to do uh, if you can just pop your pencil outline in, get it nice and clean, and then just follow with the brush. Uh, really nice, simple and effective. Uh, and for a final touch, I just thought I'd throw in a couple of bird silhouettes in this top corner. Uh, I think they just help to balance the composition uh, really nicely. And here we are, this is the finished painting. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed watching the process. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, if you've got any questions, please let me know. Uh, this is me trying to show you just how shiny and iridescent uh, this gold paint is. I'm not sure I'd quite manage, but trust me, it's a really lovely colour. I heartily recommend it. I shall, in fact, probably uh, be buying another tube. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I can't wait to hear what you think of our little fox's uh, journey into uh, abstract or semi-abstract landscapes. Um, so that's all from me today. Thank you everyone for watching. I can't wait to see you all again in the next video.